Welcome along, guys. Cheers for tuning in. Clio Cup Fixed Track Guide Week 3. This is a Monza. Um, 212.3 was my best lap here. I know there's a 212.1, 212 flat at a push if we were to hook up the perfect lap, but really tricky to get um, to get the perfect lap in round here. But I'm pretty pleased with this. I think this will be quite competitive. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys get some value from it. If you do, do us a favour, give us a like before you go. And if you're not yet subscribing to the channel and obviously you like the sort of content, then please consider subscribing. Right, let's go. Right, so as always, we'll do a lap on board before we begin to break the lap down. So, the lap in question is number 11, a 212.3. I do believe there's a 212.1, 212 flat in there. If I hooked up every corner, however, very difficult to hook up this track for me. Struggled a little bit. We were taking advantage of the active reset. This is lap number two, so one out lap and then... The fast lap, obviously the tyres are the best at this point. There's 22 litres of fuel in. Um, and the only adjustment is the brake valve, which is set to 40, which I believe is the maximum. Okay, here we go. There we go. So we'll run this back uh, and we'll start picking up some uh, breaking points and whatever else you are interested to know. So yeah, like I said, there's definitely a couple of tenths in it. There's definitely uh, time there. So as we approach uh, turn one, we'll discuss the exit of the final turn as we get to the end of the lap, which is uh, very important, obviously. Right, so... As we get towards turn one, what I'm looking for is, first of all, the, the 150 marker. Just as uh, something to know if you're on a decent lap or not, you should be hitting around 200 mile an hour before, sorry, kilometers an hour. Be a hell of a clear. Um, 200 kilometers an hour by the time you get to that little thing there. So 201 on the dash there, you can see right hand side. Um, so yeah. If you're not reaching 200 kph at this point, you've probably got a bad exit off uh, the final turn. So keep that in mind. So obviously picking up your, your boards here on the right, uh, on the left, sorry, 200, 150. And I'm going to start to break at the edge of this hedge. So as that 
just disappears there. That's my um, brake marker. So as we, uh, again, apologies for the shoddy camera work. As we roll this on, pretty much as this drops out of my uh, peripheral vision on the left-hand side, the pillar covers it there. So as we approach that, that's the point where I am uh, applying the bricks. So you can see on the left-hand side, we're probably looking at about 75% braking, obviously very hard threshold braking at this point. And I'm easing my car over, which is why I'm kind of lining up a little bit, you know, with a little bit of a, little bit of a gap there on the left hand side I'm braking in a straight line but moving over at the same time so I'm steering wheel straight but obviously I'm uh, I've angled it towards this so I want to be just picking up this Astro now this is risky but you know this is where the time's coming from um, just about picking up this Astro here and dropping down to second gear at this point and I'm going to start to turn in somewhere towards the middle of this um, so still in third gear there, as we roll it on a little bit, I've probably dropped it down there into second gear. Um, so yeah, you can see I'm in neutral at that point. So that's where I'm shifting, and you can see I'm just starting to apply steering angle here. So you'll see me gloves, obviously I've got to take this, uh, this bar away every time, but you'll see me gloves on the wheel. Just feeding that through a little more every time. Um, and you want to be aiming for this white line here initially that's what i'm looking at as i go through turn one now you don't want to be going over this white line with your left uh wheels so the back end i mean at that point there it looks like i'm going to miss it but i think this is where the brake valve comes in the back end is quite floaty so it kind of oversteers in and it sets you up quite nicely so that's pretty much um pretty much perfect there i would say maybe you could go a little bit more uh this way if you wanted to risk it i suppose um but yeah i'm pretty pleased with that on entry so i think there's a little squeeze of the throttle there obviously i'm back on the throttle at this point as i go over the curb start to squeeze the throttle back on now that's pretty much just to settle the car again straighten it up before you then Take a little bit of this sausage curve. You'll see I'm off the throttle now and I'll probably have a little touch of the brake to get the nose in. Nothing. So I am squeezing the brake there. So whether I need to make some adjustments because um, I could, could have probably got that nose in a little bit more. So there's a, another little mistake there. So like I said, there is probably a bit of time in this lap. So yeah, no trail braking on the second part, but I would advise you try and get the nose in with a little bit more brakes there. I've uh, missed a trick there, really. But straight over that sausage curb, um, you can take a little bit of that. It will unsettle the car a bit, but you're back on the throttle straight away and obviously run this out um, out wide on the exit. But you should be full throttle. As soon as you come off that curb, you should be landing uh, and you should be full throttle. So obviously every exit is massive um, at Monza, especially in a car like this. So we're full throttle. Um, you know, as soon as we land, way before we're, we're tracking out wide there. Um, and we'll then run this all the way up. So obviously a little bit of the kerb. Just keep your wheels as straight as possible here and take the uh, the shortest distance. So keep this nice and tight. And then, yeah, again, this one's very important. So you can... You can brake quite late here and be a little bit brave. Now, I don't actually know what my braking point is, so I'm going to find this out with you guys right now. Um, as we roll it through, this is kind of what I'm looking at. This uh, little access road, or whatever you want to call it there. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. You can you know, keep your eye on that orange barrier, if you like. So this is kind of where I'm going to be applying the brake. Yeah, so the brakes are on there. Obviously in cockpit, it's just, again, moved away from my peripheral vision. So as we roll through there, and then, yeah, that's where I'm applying the brakes. Just as we get to that point. Now, again, I'm going to be lining this up um, 
a little bit tricky to get that barrier out of the way. Uh, and you can see I'm minimising this gap again uh, and I'm going to attempt to place this on the kerb before we before we turn in. Again, it's risky. We're looking at about 75 to 80% threshold break in there and you can see I'm just about on the grass. Now that will step out on you if you were... Uh, Take liberties with it. So I'm coming off the brake a little bit now. Now if I was still on 75-80%, who knows, it may have turned on me there. But luckily we've got away with it um, and we've just extended it that little bit. Obviously turning in. So again, from the cockpit, I'm lining up this, this white line here. Um, that's what I'm aiming for. Now you can see I'm not cranking the steering on. There's not loads of steering angle on there. Um, but we are aiming for that again. So this is what it sort of should look like from... The front now. So obviously you can dive over this. Didn't get a 1x for this. So you can jump straight over that one. So this one's a little bit more forgiving. Than the previous. Okay, so straight over there. Now, you'll see I'm picking up the throttle. I'm trying to get this straight. Now, you can, because I was doing it in some other laps, but again, I couldn't hook it up perfectly. Um, as soon as this car lands, you can you can be flat. As if you line this up correctly, you can be absolutely flat. Smash this sausage curb, but you don't need to be as uh, gentle on the throttle as I am here, but I just, I didn't want to risk it at this point, I was up on my lap, I thought it was a good chance of getting a good one, probably take a little bit more curb as well, because um, I'm not full throttle, and I'm not fully over that sausage curb, but you can be, um, yeah, you can hit that much harder, but I suppose it depends how much you want to unsettle the cars, you can see it bouncing around when we land, But yeah, so nice and wide. And then as brave as you want on there, it's going to bounce and track out. But hopefully you don't get uh, an off track there. Um, this is very lenient, this one. Uh, if you're going to get one, then you're going to get one here. Which is probably why I've been a little bit more conservative as we're going. Um, but this first one, you can, you can absolutely launch it over. And again, if you line it up correctly, just flat out all the way through here. If you can, I wasn't quite able to on this lap. Um, and then this one, so we're not going to shift down to third. Feels a little strange um, entering braking zones and not dropping gears. But we're not going to, and again, this is probably the most difficult braking point in terms of a marker, because I don't have one. Um, it just kind of hasn't went. Obviously, the shadow's on the road, so as we roll it forward, I would imagine I'm braking somewhere just after this. Kind of in between the two. Um, yeah I mean the brakes come on whereas I'm just between the shadows but shadows aren't a good thing to go off in terms of uh, brake markers because chances are they will move not much in a 15 minute race to be fair so you could use this uh, anyway we're going to be leaving it in fourth gear 50% um, at the most and then trail, trailing this in going to start to turn in nice and early Obviously the back end's going to try and roll a little bit, but you're going to let it and then catch it again with the throttle um, and then pick up the throttle nice and early. So as we get to this bit here, you should probably be um, be picking it up. Um, yeah, if not full by that point. Um, it's probably a little bit on the exit there. I wasn't pushing that much. So again, the more I watch this, the more I know there's definitely time in this lap. Um, so yeah, pick your throttle up as brave as you can, but this would be, this would be sort of your rule of thumb. You're going to apply the throttle as soon as you come off the brakes. It's the best way to get the car settled again, but you want to be full throttle by at least the exit of that, um, little service road again, access road, whatever you want to call it. And again, as we approach the second Lesmo, we're looking for this 50 board. Now... I think you want to break a little bit before it. 
leave it in fourth. And this one's obviously all important now. So I'll try and get back on the throttle um, before the apex. So we'll see where the brakes are coming on a little bit before the 50. I think. So we'll see if there's anything we can pick up on here. Um, yeah, pretty much as it is about to disappear behind that pillar. We're already on the brakes there. So nice and early, a little bit before the 50, if you can. And then as we roll it in, I'm back on the throttle now. So very uh, gently at first till it settles. But I'm full throttle before I reach the end of this little astro right which is obviously all important all the way down here let it run nice and wide so maybe a little bit more in that one as well possibly so yeah again as wide as you dare there's probably a little bit of time there to be a bit wider if you wanted to but yeah full throttle by the time you clear this and then you know you're going to get a nice run down to the Ascari chicanes so again, keep it nice and tight on the left-hand side. We can skip all this on. And then again, this bit is where um, you want to be as brave as possible. Again, access road, 100. The 100 is probably a little bit late for me here. We'll see where I squeeze it on. Yeah, pretty much just the access road again there. Back in the cockpit. So yeah, you could pretty much use that line there as, um, as your breaking point. It's going to make not much difference by the time you get to that. And then we're, what are we looking at there? 60%, 65%. Uh, but again, I'm aiming for this to try and extend it as much as I possibly can. So you can see, again, I'm uh, reducing this angle on the right-hand side. As we approach this curbing, down to fourth gear, and then chucking it in. Now, you can take a lot of these, um, a lot of these sausage curbs. Again, probably more than, than I have here. But you don't want to unsettle the car too much at this point. But you do want to be back on the throttle. So as we roll it on, before my car lands, I'm full throttle. And I probably don't lift. If I do, I've probably lost a lot of time. Flat all the way through. Flat all the way through. Plenty of sausage curb on the exit and then up to fifth gear. Um, whether you want to leave it in fourth as you go through or not, I don't know. This just felt good for me. So... Yeah, avoid these ones. You don't need to be cutting that corner. That's going to unsettle the car a little bit too much. But keep it nice and tight. And then, yeah, chuck it over there so you're inside. Uh, wheels are just about going to clip that. Maybe take a little bit more if you wanted to. But you don't want to be cranking too much steering angle on through anything. Especially this, uh, this chicane. The more steering angle you apply, the more speed you're going to scrub with the tyres, but fourth gear all the way through. And then we're up to fifth, pretty much as we clip the kerb. And then we go to the parabolica. Now, like I said, we'll discuss this one towards the end of the lap. So this is important. Obviously you want to be getting a good exit. And I never know how to take this corner. I think it's easier in a slower car because it makes more sense in a slower car. So once again, I'll probably try and extend as much as I can over here. And we're breaking about the middle of this. Tends to be the same in most cars. Um, so that is where my brake marker is. That's where I'm applying it. Probably a little bit later, but, but you know, by the time you get to half of it in cockpit, about there, that's where I'm going to start applying the brake so we'll roll it through and obviously you want to be down to fourth gear and the car will try and slide here lose the back end if somebody loses the back end here you'll see how much time they lose down the straight we're going to keep this nice and tight again let it roll but then you've got to catch it so you're going to hold the brakes all the way in and then as soon as you come off the brakes just pick that throttle up you'll see there's not much time spent off the throttle um as soon as we come off the brake, we're pretty much back on the throttle. But you don't want to be going too hard on the throttle here too soon because it will track out and you don't really want to. So this is what I'm saying. It's probably easier in a slower car because it makes more sense. You want to be nice and tight all the way around uh, this inside curbing. And when you see it disappear, that's when you know you can start 
um, taking the steward angle off and straightening up a little bit. Yeah, and around we go. So yeah, once again, just breaking, letting the back roll a little bit, nice and tight, early as you can on the throttle, nice and straight. Now what I tend to do is follow, and again, I'm not sure if it's good or not, but nice and tight, and then follow this line. I tend to follow that line there, maybe chop it off a little bit towards the end, but you don't want to be out here. So I tend to just kind of follow this now and sort of straight line it. Then again, as we go through, keep an eye on the speed down here. We want to be looking for somewhere near 200. So we're at the 200 kilometers an hour mark there, well before. Um, the building this time, so that was probably a much better exit than the last one, so. 201. Yeah, just gone 202 as we got underneath it. So, yeah, um, like I say, plenty of time to be had. Um, difficult. Um, difficult to hook it up around Monza. I didn't mention in the last video, 49 degree track temperature. So what I'm doing with these is I'm going on to the VRS um, website. I'm a VRS subscriber and i'm using their test sessions so i'm basically matching the conditions that they run their um sessions in and then i know kind of where i'm at so i'm normally around half a second off um the alien times in this car it's normally a second to 1.3 tenths in a gt car maybe more depending on the circuit but in a car like this or a touring car, if I'm within 0.5, then I'm very happy with that. Um, and obviously with drafting in a race, that's uh, negligible. I think you won't really notice that in a race. Um, however, they do get away from me a little bit towards the end. But on a good day, um, I can mix it with them. So yeah, so 49 degree track temps. So they are a little bit hot. Um, hopefully it'll be some, some cooler temps this week but yeah hopefully that helps some of you out um just let me know in the comments if you've got any uh questions suggestions but um i'm pleased with how this has been received so as long as you keep enjoying it i'll keep uh chucking them out there for you right enjoy right there you go hopefully you guys get some value from that one um, really pleased with the positive response we've had in the comments. Really pleased that some of you are able to go quicker. Um, I've had some real nice comments, people popping into streams um, and letting us know that they've got pole positions and podiums and race wins and, you know, some of it's down to the help that they've had on the videos, the track guides and that. So really pleased with that. Really pleased to be able to help some people out. Um, hopefully you guys have another good week. Um, if I see some of you on track, give me a shout. Um, but yeah, hopefully... This helps you a little bit and we'll see you next week if not before if you like the video do us a favor give us a thumbs up before you go and if you're not yet subscribed to the channel and obviously you like this sort of content please consider clicking that button down there cheers guys see you next week